What's up guys? Hey, welcome to The Gambling Show. And I know a lot of you guys don't like the gambling shows, so all the non-gambling related stuff will come first and the gambling will be after that. So you don't even have to check for a timestamp. Just turn it off when I start talking about the game. All right guys, this is the first and last time I'm gonna do this, but Xander Hand, your dad reached out, said you guys watch my videos and I appreciate it, I really do. Happy 14th birthday. I don't plan on doing birthday shout outs, but you guys hit me up. And I just, I don't know, your dad made a great case and I appreciate it and I hope you have a wonderful birthday. There is a crazy rumor going around about Jet Lawrence and I'm gonna tell you whether it's true or not. I'm also gonna give you a quick Matt Biden update. Matt Biden is recovering from a serious spinal injury and he's making some progress, but I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna update you on how he's doing. Without further ado, let's get into it. You need people like me so you can point your fucking fingers and say that's the bad guy. So let's start with the big rumor regarding Jet Lawrence. And the rumor that's out there is that he got his girlfriend pregnant. I think it was started from this podcast with Ryan Hughes. I don't know the context to this. I don't know. I never, I haven't seen the whole piece. I couldn't find the whole piece, but this is the clip that's kind of stirring the pot. And I don't know if this is a hypothetical by Rhino or not, but here it is. That Jet Lawrence and his girlfriend recently announced apparently that they're pregnant or they're having a baby nice and that's great but unfortunately that child will not get all of jet and that woman will not get all of jet impossible impossible <clears throat> so jet will be there but his mind is going to be somewhere else so that's rhino's views on you know jet possibly having a child at this point i don't agree with his views i think he's dead wrong and i just think that that comes i mean yes you can be dedicated and I just, but I think that's just wrong. I think you can still be a family man and the best racer in the world, but he would have to prioritize and things would change a little bit. He wouldn't just be a kid anymore. He steps right into that adult realm and maybe Rhino's never done that. I don't know, but I don't think it would be that big of a deal. He's financially support. He's got a solid family around him. If this rumor were true, which I'm told it's not, when I reached out to the Lawrence camp, they were like, oh my gosh, they, they couldn't, they're like, this is wrong. This is not true. I'm so mad. Why, what, this is what's wrong with the internet. Here's a little screenshot of the text that they sent me. So clearly this is just a rumor unless, unless they're lying to me, which I'll say this, the contact I reached out over there, they have not steered me wrong yet. Freestyle legend, Matt Byton is recovering from a serious injury. I'm going to put a link in the description. If you want to donate to the road to recovery where they're helping him with his recovery, spinal injuries are very serious. Unfortunately, they're a problem in our sport. I don't know how to fix it. I, I, unfortunately, I just think it's something that we kind of have to deal with, but here's him telling you exactly how his recovery is going. I'm Matt Biden here. Just want to give an update. We're two and a half weeks in, uh, doing good, doing better than I was. And, uh, the outpouring of support has been amazing. Super thankful for everybody. It's uh, I'm going to rehab on Monday, going to Craig's for 30 days. So I had to sit an extra week in the hospital. I got three fractured ribs in each armpit. So rolling over a few times daily on each side. Uh, that feels great on the ribs, uh, but part of the game. So suck it up. And uh, So we're heading into Spring Creek, Minnesota. You know, Mount Martin, the Whoop Monster. This is a really fun track. These guys all seem to like riding this track. It's got a gnarly start. They got that high speed right hander and it's kind of scary, which that, you know what? I'm gonna start with the hole shot in the 250. I really think Hayden Deegan's probably gonna pull the hole shot and so do the odds makers. They have him at minus 300. And what that means is if you bet $3 on Hayden Deegan, you'd only win $1. So you have to put up $3 to collect four when it's all done. And Levi Kitchen, he is four to one to get a whole shot. That's $1, pays you $4. So you bet $1 on Levi Kitchen, you collect five. Uh, he's got a lot of confidence coming off that second moto he had last weekend. I really think that that confidence could get him. I mean, he's got two attempts at a whole shot. That's all he needs. He doesn't have to leave. He just has to get past that white line first. I'm gonna put a little money on Levi Kitchen to get a whole shot. Now let's take a look at our head-to-head -head matchups. This is rider versus rider. Whoever finishes higher wins the bet. This week, they've got Joe Shimoda versus Levi Kitchen. Now Joe has been consistently better the last couple weeks, you know, getting the second motos. He got second, he won one. He's been doing much better. This week, they have him against Levi Kitchen. And like I said, if the information I got about Levi Kitchen is accurate and he comes out there, he could very well beat Joe Shimoda. So, when you're getting 
plus 150, that means you bet a dollar to win a dollar 50 and you'd collect 250. I'm gonna put a little bit on Levi Kitchen. I think he'll probably finish ahead of Joe. Joe just hasn't shown a consistency that I can really count on him. He looks really good in the second motos, but what happens in the first motos? Then we've got Danger Boy, Hayden Deegan versus Chance Hymas. Now this is a lock. I, this is as close to, to a lock as you're gonna get. Obviously it's motocross, anything can happen. But if you're gonna give me Hayden Deegan versus Chance Hymas head to head, uh, I know Chance is coming off that win, but we've seen this over and over. A kid gets his first win, they have an emotional letdown, and then next week, they don't tend to back it up. Hayden Deegan coming off a poor performance. We know how he does whenever he gets doubted or anything, so I think he's gonna be really strong. It's only a minus 225, so you're not getting a lot as far as value, but I just think it's easy money. So I would probably, I'm gonna probably put about 10 bucks on that. I'll only win about 275, so, but whatever. I, a win's a win, I will take it. Chance Hymas, on the other hand, if you think he's gonna beat Hayden, you get plus 160. That's just not enough for me. I just don't think it's good enough odds. So I wouldn't bet on Chance Hymas. If you're gonna do it, I would just take the lower value and go with Hayden Deegan. Now the odds to win the race. He's got Hayden Deegan at minus 175, and I think he's probably gonna win, but I don't know. I, I, I'm gonna stick with the money just on him to beat Chance Hymas, because I feel like it's more of a lock. You're still at minus 175. You get a little better payout if you bet him to win, but there's a possibility something happens in either moto. So I'm gonna probably lay off Hayden Deegan, even though he's probably gonna win. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit on Levi Kitchen at 10 to one. Do I think he's gonna win? Nah, but at 10 to one, you guys know me. I like a long shot every now and then, and I think he very well could get it done. Another guy that's getting pretty decent odds is Tom Vial. Tom Vial, he's a guy that has won, can win. He's got two MXGP championships. He's had a rough, go as the last few weeks, but he has it in him. He very well could win. And at five to one, ah, I think I might put five bucks on him. So if I put five on Tom and he wins, I would collect 30. So I'd profit 25. Now to the 450s. Let's start with the head to head. We have Chase Sexton versus Hunter Lawrence. And in my mind, this is pretty much who, which guy's going to win the race. You get Chase Sexton at minus 250. I don't think it's, I don't think he's that much of a lock. He, he has a tendency to make too many mistakes, tuck the front end. I just can't feel comfortable with Chase at minus 250. If it was minus 150 or minus 175, I might change that tune. But with Hunter, Hunter, he's in a must win situation. If he lets Chase come out and go 1-1 and take Millville, this thing could get out of control pretty quickly. He's still within striking distance, but he needs a win. And at plus 170, you're almost getting two to one on him. I like, I'm gonna put five bucks on Hunter Lawrence to finish ahead of Chase Sexton. And like I said, this isn't the best bet in the world, but that's why you get the added bonus of the odds. And if you go with what I said originally is one of these two guys is for sure gonna win and you want better odds, then you would put Hunter to win at plus 200 or Chase at minus 200 because I don't see anyone else winning. If you want to take a long shot, Justin Cooper rides this track really well. If either of those guys has any sort of mistakes, I don't think he's going to straight up win, but he will be in the mix if anyone makes a mistake. So I like Justin Cooper at nine to one. That means I bet nine dollar or I bet one dollar to win nine dollars. So if I bet one dollar on Justin Cooper, I collect ten. I might put just a couple dollars on him because because I'm that guy. Now to the whole shot. Chase Sexton is minus 300. I just, I don't like going for a whole shot at minus 300. The odds are too low. There's too many things that can happen. Hunter Lawrence is minus 130, which is almost even money. So if you're at minus 130, I think if you bet a dollar, you win 70 cents. So it's pretty close. You'd collect a dollar 70. I still don't like that. Justin Cooper has been a whole shot machine this year and you get two to one. So I really do think Justin Cooper will get one of these whole shots. So at two to one, I'll probably put five or $10 on him. And he's been really good for me. I've won the whole shot a few times this year with him and they kind of corrected it. He was getting four and five to one odds to get the whole shot. Now it's down to two to one, but at two to one, I like Justin Cooper to get a whole shot. So if you don't like betting on the races and you like betting on other stuff, I'm really interested in the politics. They have some interesting odds on this. You can bet on whether Joe Biden will pull out before the election and the odds are that he's going to pull out of this election. It's plus 110 for him to stay in the election and minus 150 if he drops out. Yes, you can bet on politics here. And the one thing I wanna point out about Joe Biden and what we kind of all were confirmed 
we've always said, you know, hey, the president is just a puppet. It's a guy who has, you know, the so-called deep state running them. And seeing him in that debate that he took a week to prepare for, you can say what you want about Joe Biden as a person. I don't, I don't want to get into that argument. But I think we can all agree he's doing what he's told to do. He's not really the guy making any decisions. And then if anyone doubted that, that definitely, I don't know how you could doubt it after that debate and seeing the way he talks. And I just don't think having that guy go into a meeting with other world leaders is a good look for our country. And I'm not a huge Trump fan either, but if that's the two you're giving me, I'm probably gonna go with Trump. Fun fact, according to Bet Online, they have Donald Trump as the favorite to win this election. And they actually have Kamala Harris at lower odds than Joe Biden to win this election. True story. Go over and check it out. And if you uh, if you do create an account over on Bet Online, use the link in the description. That's how they take care of me. Uh, head on over there. You put your money in. It's an offshore betting, so it does take a day or two if you use your bank. If you use crypto, it's instant. And I have had good luck with these guys. I've had issues. You email them. They fixed them. I've got money in a timely manner. I have yet to hear anyone have a horrible experience. I've had some people complain, but they didn't give them a day or two to fix it. And always within a day or two, whatever issue has been fixed and, and totally redeemed. Before I keep rambling, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut this short and I will catch you guys later.